Welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is Precalculus. Uh, again, we are uh, working through Chapter 2 of the Precalculus book by Demana Waits Foley Kennedy, fourth or fifth edition. I think we have a little bit of each. And uh, we are working on rational functions, rational equations. We're in Section 2.7. And uh, this, is, this video is mainly for a recap uh, of doing transformations uh, on the equation 1 over x, solving some linear, I'm sorry, solving some rational equations uh, for values that make it true. And also a little bit with limits. Uh, we've dabbled with limits just a tiny, teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny bit. And we're going to expand that just a little bit, okay, whatever the, those are. Okay, all right, so let's first start with uh, looking at y equals 1 over x. And just a reminder, this is, uh, th this form is not very user-friendly in when comparing it to y equals 1 over x. The idea is there's probably something on the outside multiplying, and there could be some kind of uh, addition or subtraction in here, and there could be some kind of addition or subtraction on the end. So if we could make it into that form, this would be much easier. So the idea is this fraction bar represents division, and we're going to do some dividing. Uh, I'm just going to do synthetic division this time, uh, just because I think it's a little easier. Just a reminder that if you're going to use synthetic division, you have to have things in order. So we're going to write that, what is basically the dividend, as negative 3x plus 4. That minus sign has to keep a negative with the, with the 3x. Okay, so negative 3 and 4. Bring down the negative 3, multiply and add, and that was just that quick. So the answer for this division is negative 3 plus negative 11 over x minus 5. Okay, so that's that's what the equation is. Now, again, that probably, now it's most many of you are going to be able to look at that and just know exactly what to do without rearranging this at all. I'm going to rearrange it one more time. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this as negative 11, negative 11 on the outside, 1 over x minus 5, and a minus 3 on the end. Now, and the, the reason, again, is uh, if I think of this as negative 11 over 1, and I multiply by that fraction, 1 over x minus 5, then I can recreate what I already had, okay? So, what's going on? Well, on the outside, I have a multiplication of, uh, of negative 11. So, really what's happening is I have a vertical stretch of 11, and when, when you multiply by a negative on the y values, it actually reflects things over the x-axis, excuse me, reflection over x-axis, and I know that there was a shift, uh, well, remember inside inverse, so that's right 5, and on the outside, do what it says, so down 3. And that is a complete description. Uh, just a reminder that anything about multiplication or division has to come before anything about addition or subtraction. Okay? And I know some of you uh, really like the notation, so remember this is the notation is for a linear transformation because I have a combination of multiplication and addition or subtraction. Uh, so L of xy, so it maps all of the xy's onto, on the x direction it's just x plus 5. In the y direction, it's negative 11y minus 3. Okay? All right, and uh, you can certainly graph this and play around with it. I don't want to do that right now just because I want to uh, be, uh, there are other things I want to talk about. Okay? Moving on. All right, so I want to spend a little bit of time looking at this equation and its graph. And that LIM means limit. And what it really means is as x approaches something, then what does y approach? So y approaches something, okay? All right, so uh, we've done a little bit of this when talking about end behavior. What we did with end behavior is we just grabbed this, and, and then we also said y approaches in that way. Okay, so as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches something. Okay, well, this is the same concept as that, uh, you know, as x approaches some number, what does y approach? Okay, so as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 
Well, so these two are actually about end behavior. Okay, and we're just kind of getting used to this notation. We, we've seen a variation on it, and then we're going to ease into this. Okay, well, so end behavior is also about horizontal asymptotes, if there are horizontal asymptotes. And there is a horizontal asymptote. And that horizontal asymptote in this case is y equals 1. So I'm going to put a little dotted line across at 1. And I'm willing to bet some money that as I go to the left end, it's going to approach 1. As I go to the right end, it's going to approach 1. Now, there are variations of equations, and we'll see some in Chapter 3 when we talk about exponentials and logs, where the end behavior, uh, even though there's a horizontal asymptote, the end behavior won't be the same on both ends. Okay? All right. Now, so I'm going to do a little sketch of this graph and so that we can finish talking about these other two limits that are written here. And this particular graph also has a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Okay, so also equals x po uh, positive 1. Okay. Okay, and I could play around with a y-intercept on this. If I put 0 in for both x's, uh, that's going to be 0 plus 3 over 0 minus 1. So negative 3 is the y-intercept. And so I'm going to guess that the graph looks something like this. Okay. So just kind of confirming what we already said about the end behavior. As x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching, well, it's getting closer and closer and closer to that asymptote. And similarly on the other end. Okay. Now, as we discussed, this says as x approaches, as x approaches, as x approaches. Now, there's a little bit of a, a difference here on this notation. Notice there's a little plus sign and a minus sign. This means, and this doesn't mean positive 1, and then, and then this one, negative 1. That's not what that means, because the negative's in the wrong spot. Okay? What that actually means is, this one means from the right. And so guess what this one means? That's right, from the left. Okay, so, so what this is saying is, as I track along this graph, as, as I'm approaching 1, positive 1, from the right. Well, here's x equals positive 1. As I approach it from the right, I have to be on the right side, and I'm getting closer and closer and closer. As I start getting closer and closer and closer to 1, what are the y values actually going to? What are they approaching? Well, in this case, it's going up forever, so it's approaching. Whoop, I wrote that in the wrong spot. Sorry. It's approaching positive infinity. Okay. As I go to the other piece of the graph, because this says from the left, so here I am somewhere over here on the left side, exactly where, I don't know, somewhere close to the 1. As I get closer and closer and closer to the 1, as I get closer and closer and closer to an x value of 1, what are the y values getting closer and closer to? Well, it's kind of like that uh, infinity, only it's going down, so negative infinity. Okay? And that's pretty much all I'm going to say about this right now. Okay? Um, so, again, ju just a, a quick reminder that uh, limits are about what is y approaching when x is approaching something. So as x approaches infinity, as x approaches negative infinity, as x approaches 1, as x approaches 17. And then if there is a little plus sign or minus sign after the x value, that's talking about from the left side of that x value or the right side of that x value. Okay? And then all you're saying is, what are the y values approaching? That, that's, that's what it means. Okay? As x approaches some value, what is y approaching? All right. Moving on. All right. We've done a couple examples uh, like this, and I just wanted to do some more. Okay, and I just I'm going to do a quick reference back to um, I think it's right there. There it is. Okay, now this is actually from the last video. Uh, so remember, the plan is multiply both sides by the least common denominator. 
uh, and the least common denominator, remember, is all of the factors of all the denominators. And at the end, we must check to make sure the, ex the solutions are not extraneous. If they make the denominator zero, that's a no-go. All right, so, okay, just a, so, least common denominator, least common denominator has all factors of all denominators, and then we have to check uh, in the denominators, uh, and because the denominator cannot equal zero. Okay, well, so for this one, again, uh, like, like the one we've done before, uh, in order to know what the factors of all the denominators are, we have to actually do a little factoring. Okay, so signs are the same, they are minus. Factors of 12 that add up to 7, I think it's 3 and 4. Okay, so the least common denominator in this case has to have a factor of k minus 3 in it, has to have a factor of k minus 4 in it, has to have a factor of k minus 3 in it, yep, we got one of those, has to have a factor of k minus 4, yep, got one of those. So we are going to multiply both sides by k minus 3 times k minus 4. Okay, sorry, it's getting a little crowded up there. Okay, so when I multiply this whole thing times this first fraction, this k minus 3 is going to cancel out. It's going to divide out. Now, just a reminder that it's got to come back for the next term. Okay, so don't get too excited about crossing this thing out. Okay, so, k, so what's left then is k from that numerator times k minus 4 plus... Okay, next term, same thing. This whole thing times this one now. So k minus 4 is going to divide out here. Okay. Oops, sorry, I got a little ex overexcited. That's gone. Uh, 4, and then the k minus 4 again is gone. So k minus 3. Okay. And then equals, now on the right side of this equation, actually have k minus 3 dividing out and k minus 4 dividing out, leaving just 25. Again, now this is really back to an algebra 1 type problem. We know it's embedded in something a little more interesting than that. But uh, So case, I'm just distributing. Okay, and I'm combining like terms. Well, isn't that interesting? Those guys went away, didn't they? Okay, minus 4k plus 4k, yep. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and subtract uh, 25 from both sides, so minus 28 equals 0. Well, I probably didn't really want to go that way. Yeah, actually, since since I don't have a, a B term, I don't have a, a just a K term, I probably actually wanted that 28 on the other side. I know some of you are just going to kick automatically into quadratic formula mode, and I'm just not there. Um, so I have k squared equals 28, just recopying what I already had. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. When I do that, that's really the absolute value of k, uh, equals the square root of 28. Well, the square root of 28, 28 is 4 times 7, so this is 2 times the square root of 7. And because of that absolute value, technically this is plus or minus 2 square root of 7. Okay. And so I multiply both sides by the least common denominator, uh, uh, which included all of the factors of the denominators. Now I need to check in the denominators. So I'm willing to guess that this minus 3 is not equal to 0. It's possible it's close to 0, but it's not equal to 0, so it's not going to make it undefined. Same for x minus 4. So we are done. This is, this is not so pretty, but, you know, that's life in uh, pre-calculus. That's what makes this a little more interesting. Okay, so two solutions, both of neither of which uh, make the denominator zero. All right, we're going to do one more, and here it is. And again, same process. I need a least common denominator. We're going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. It has to have all the factors, and then remember we need to check with the denominator. Okay, and again, I'm going to factor. So x uh, probably plus four x minus one. Okay, again, it has to have uh, opposite signs because of the negative 4. Factors of 4 could be 2 and 2, but they don't add up to 3, so that's looking good. So the least common denominator has to have x plus 4 in it and x minus 1 in it. Those are the same, so we're going to multiply 
both sides of this equation by x plus 4, x minus 1. Okay, I guess that's a giant parenthesis on the left side there, or on the right side. That's okay. x plus 4, x minus 1. Okay, so this whole thing on the right side, let's do the right side first because that's my favorite. Uh, 0, yeah. On the left side, x plus 4 divides out with that x plus 4. Okay, leaving 4x times x minus 1. Next term, x minus 1 divides out with x minus 1. Okay, I need that x minus 1 in a minute, so I'm going to undo that. And then, so that's going to be 3 times x plus 4. Whoop, not equals, sorry. Got a little ahead of myself. Minus, now on this next one, x plus 4 divides out, x minus 1 divides out, so that's really just 15. Equals 0. All right, well, just first distribute. Okay, and combining like terms. And I know some of you, again, are going to go to quadratic formula, and I understand that. I'm going to factor, I'm going to think, I think it's going to be 4x and x, and the reason I think that is I see this minus 1 in the middle, and I know one of the factors of 3 is 3, one of the factors of 4 is 4. I'm thinking it's going to be something like this. Now, and I know I've done this lots of times, so factoring for me is probably a little easier than many of you. Um, but, you know, it's a, it just it gets easier with practice. Okay, so one of the solutions will come from when 4x plus 3 equals 0, and one of the possible solutions will come from x minus 1 equals 0. And so this is 4x equals negative 3. Be real careful with signs and which is divided by what and all that kind of stuff. x equals 1. Okay, and just a reminder that there's a giant but coming. Okay. Um, Negative 3 fourths does not make x plus 4 0. Negative 3 fourths plus 4 is not 0. Negative 3 fourths minus 1 is not 0. So neither of those factors will be 0. Okay, so it looks like negative 3 fourths is good. Uh, let's take a look at 1. Well, 1 plus 4 is not 0, but 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 divided by 0 is undefined. So that's telling me that x equals 1 is extraneous. No, I, I can't remember. I think it's two ends. Okay. So remember, extraneous means extra and aneous. Yeah, extra and erroneous, extra and wrong. So that means that the only solution for this thing really, oh, that was a bad choice. The only solution for this thing really is negative three-fourths. Okay. All right, so that is it. Uh, that's what we're uh, going to look at today, and I uh, appreciate you watching. And uh, I don't know, something about a shout-out to Shelby and Barbara? No, nah, I really don't want to do this. Bye.